in a world crying out for a top 10 show. John Roca and Matt Nost are here. So grab your assigned seat, sit back, and enjoy this week's top 10. Brought to you by the Schmoes No Network. Take it away, boys. All right, welcome everybody to the top ten show recap and review. Um, <laughs> we haven't we haven't done one of these in a while. No, it's been yeah, it's been a minute. We thought yeah. we were gonna do one for Creed, but I still haven't seen it. Good God Almighty, son! I, sorry, it just kind of fell by the wayside. Now I'll see it eventually, mm-hmm. but okay. I'm not a Rocky fan. I, yeah, it's pretty, but it's it's not Rocky. It's, it's Rocky. It's Let's be Creed. perfectly honest. It's Creed. It, it's fine. It's Creed. Is it Creed basically doing a Rocky movie? Yes. Maybe, yes. I don't want. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it too heavy. But I maybe. haven't seen it, and I know that before having seen anything but the trailer. Yeah, I know that's the case. All right, all right. Well, see it on your own sweet time. You know how Matt knows does stuff. He does stuff in his own sweet time, as Just we like all Twitter. should. Just like Twitter. Enjoy your life. <laughs> Enjoy your life. Um, but yeah, uh, we wanted to do this one special one for Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Um, I'm John Roca. I'm Matt Nost. And uh, you are listening to us. What? Are we going to put this on YouTube as well, or just on, just on iTunes? What do you think? Um, do you want to do another YouTube? Because it comes down to your schedule before you oh, leave. Oh, yeah. So. I'd be willing to if you don't mind mocking up a thumbnail. I'm happy to do it. But if sure. it's extra work, then forget it. No. It it will take. That one's super simple. Just okay. grab this, change that, done. Okay. Let's do it. Sure. Just one time. It crosses over. Um, YouTube for now. All right, your initial thoughts. Did you like oh, it? Yeah. Would you recommend so, it? I would absolutely recommend it. I would say if you're a Star Wars fan, especially an old trilogy, um, original trilogy Star Wars fan, go see this movie. Go see it multiple times. I'm going to go see it multiple times. Yes, yeah, I will be seeing it again. However, I will say that I liked it, but I did not 100% love it. And I wanted to 100% love it. Well, I told you right before we started recording, Yeah, my hurdle was... As long as it's not terrible. Oh, by the way, we should say, this is very spoiler-heavy for oh, your yeah. new listener. Um, this is very spoiler-heavy. We are going to reveal stuff that happens in the we're, movie. No, we're talking about the film. Yeah, we're talking about the film. So 100%. We're going to reveal, we're gonna, we're gonna reveal Our everything. Our favorite parts, yep. the parts we didn't like. Right. All the, that stuff. Yeah, all that stuff. So if you don't want to hear it, you haven't seen it, you don't want it spoiled, Yeah. turn this off. Right now. D- download it. Yeah. Thank, but, well, yeah, once again, we always say that. Thank you for the download. Thank you for the download. Thank you for the view on YouTube for this one. That's right. Appreciate it. Well. You know, give us a thumbs up since we gave you such a great warning. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Leave a comment. These guys give the best warnings. <laughs> but fucking turn it off. Yeah. And because, then come back and listen to yeah, it. Yeah. Once you watch you've seen it. it. Yeah, exactly. So anyway. Um, you were saying. My hurdle was just that as long as you're not terrible, uh-huh. that's all I care about. Um, and so long as you do that, I will enjoy myself. Now, the varying degree with which I enjoy myself right. thereafter is the, you know, the other component in it. But the fact that I was not disappointed, I'm more than happy with the film. Yeah. Absolutely. That's so sad. I told my wife that last night and she's like, I didn't know you were so excited. I'm like, I'm, it's such a huge part of my childhood. Yeah. And all I want it is to not be terrible. And she yeah. was like, really? And I'm like, that's all I want. I just don't want it to be the prequels. Yeah. I don't want it to be Phantom Menace all over again. Yeah. Where I built it up and I was so excited. Yeah. And then it's just a turd in your mouth. And you're like, oh, man. I saw that three times in the theater trying to convince myself that it was good. Really? <laughs> yeah, because you want to find it. Yeah. Maybe I didn't see it. Maybe oh. it's in there if I look harder. Exactly. Or I can latch on to, oh, yeah, these these destroyers, these droidicas or whatever yeah. they're called are fantastic. This is a great yeah. plot with trade oh, federations. Sh- exactly. Oh, the, the Jedi can run super fast. <laughs> sure. It's like, seriously, I was trying to find anything. <laughs> like willing more Darth Maul screen time, mm-hmm. anything else than what we got. Right. The politics of it all. Yeah. And on this one, it was just like, you know what? There's numerous aspects of it that I could have existed in more. And the ultimate yeah. key for me was when it was over, I didn't want it to end. Yeah. I wanted it to keep going. I knew yeah. exactly where it was going. It sped up on that ending pretty Yeah, quick. it really did. It yeah. just, which is something that I've, 
have an issue with or have uh, or find as a criticism. My criticisms are not uh, to destray, destroy, dissuade anyone from not going to see the movie. My criticisms are I wish this could have been better, but I still love or like the film a lot. That's what I would say. You know, um, overall, to me, I th- I think my biggest problem take, taking away from it is I don't think they fleshed out a couple of the main characters enough. Which ones? Uh, Poe and Finn. I don't think they gave us enough. I mean, Poe, no. Yeah. Or, yeah, or even Finn. Like, what does that stormtrooper dying mean to him with, the, you know, putting the mark on his mask? Why does that bother him? We don't know who that stormtrooper is that's dying. It's true. The only thing they give us is that they're not clones. Right. They're grabbed from a young age. Yes. And I don't understand why this is a better version, version. than clones. Right. Clones to me are just, they're drones. They're I, out there to work for you. They right. don't know any other existence. They've never seen any other life. Right. Uh, that one makes more sense. I don't know why you would deviate, like, unless it's cost. Well, and this is what's interesting about the first order because the way the first order is done is is is, is not is basically an homage to the darks, an homage to what was originally, you know, the republic, uh, the uh, yeah, the uh, the uh, the dark side. It is not uh, like Vader and the Emperor Palpatine. It's a religious homage. So that's what's so frustrating about it, and a little bit, and I and I don't think they went into it enough. Religious in, homage in how in, in you're that, saying it's no longer a bureaucratic entity; it's a faith. Yeah, like in, in as a or or a force driven thing. It seems like you know, like a well, we don't know the story behind. That, well, that's my point. See, I thought that that would be part of the closing. Is uh, what is it? Arlo Ren? Yeah, Hi, Kylo Ren. Kylo, Kylo Ren. Ren. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, him going back. Versus, I do like Arlo Ren though. I like Arlo, Arlo Ren, Arlo sure. Ren. It's you know, big Arlo Guthrie fan. Right. It's the only other Arlo in the world that I can come up with. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I figured the the mirror when Ray is going to see Luke, yeah. would be Ren going the oh, other go to see way. Snoke, go yeah. to see Snoke. Yeah. So you see both of those guys, and they're both revealed. Yeah, I figured it would just be That'd that. Have been great, Matt. That's actually a great point. That would have been awesome to see that because then they would have seen we would have seen. The mirror thing, and then how that would have led into this eventual confrontation, which we know is coming between Ray and and Ren, Kylo yeah. Ren. Yeah, hundred um, percent. And plus, I want to see what the size of the characters, because the projection is he's a god. Yeah, he is this immortal living amongst us. Yeah. Uh, but it was great in that first scene because it, he looked that big. I was like, Yeah, what the? F-? And then you see it's a hologram at the very end. Yeah. You're like, Oh, that is. That is great. So now I don't. <laughs> the character looms larger in my, you know, yeah. mind than possibly it does in reality. Yeah. Um, I wasn't a hundred percent great with him consistently being that that tall. Like it, I was like, is this real? What is this? I know it's a hologram, but it's like, is there an energy that's real? Like, is there a person coming? Like, is what's behind it? It almost felt almost felt like the Wizard of Oz, where he's like, don't go in there. It's that big head, and behind the curtain is this old dude. You know. Uh, whatever. So to me, it was a little weird to see that. Um, I because what was great about Palpatine, whenever he would appear in the original trilogies, he would just be the, the little hologram, but it'd just be covered in the in the hood. well. In the original oh. trilogy, he's projected. He's on that screen. Yeah. yeah. Um, like you see him, but it looks like a man. Right. Exactly. This one seemed like some like you said a god, and that's a very good point. It almost and which is what I mean. It's these are. These this whole first order feels like a religious homage to what the dark side was in the original trilogy, which seemed organic. This seems like they're trying to revive it uh, without oh, okay. having necessarily a full understanding of the dark side of the force. You know, I mean, they basically are reviving this uh, idea, but then there's no explanation as to why what was the motivation what's the goal what are they trying to do well i think that's what the, we have to get to because there's also mm. with with ren why yeah. why would you try and be your grandfather yeah what drew you in like we don't know any of that we don't know any of that so we don't if know that doesn't pay saying. off it's going to color my perception of Absolutely. this i'm giving them the good grace now of you're setting up to get to something. Yeah. So you have to introduce us to quite a few new characters. Right. You have to take away some old characters. Yeah. And which then they did. Yeah. And then uh move forward. So we gotta expose like flesh out the backstory of some of these people so you have an understanding of the geography of the story. Yeah. yeah. So fine. Set it up, like I'll give you that. Yeah. Cause 
as soon as we saw, like saw him uh, Ren brooding and all that, yeah. And when Leia said to Han, "Hey, bring him home," yeah, I was like, "This doesn't end well." No, in my head. And then when he first off, I love that his name is Ben. Yeah, that was to that hear was him great. Scream Ben like that. Yeah, man. And it's an homage Chills. to the guy that brought them together. Yeah, yep. they wouldn't. You know, it's like this this old paternalistic person for her especially. Yeah, and carry that on. And he was, you know. He taught Luke, and yeah. he he taught your grandfather, and this right. guy is, you know, he's important to all of us, to yeah. the universe at large. And when he said that, you're like, oh, motherfucker, that is fantastic. Yeah. But when he walked out and was like, I'm I'm trying to work through something, like, can you help me? I was like, yeah. no, just don't. <laughs> I know you're his dad, but don't. As soon as you're like, because you don't build up the angst of a villain like that to have it pay off where he dies or yeah. they, they join forces that quickly. No. It just doesn't make sense. So I knew. So I was like, oh, no. Yeah. And then I just loved uh, Harris, the look on his face. Harrison Ford wasn't, it was pain, but also love yeah. as he's dying. Yeah. And he holds on to his face just yeah. a little bit. Great. Ending. He's already forgiving him. Yeah. As he's doing it. And that was like, wow, that was, that was fantastic. Yeah. But I uh, also right now I'm not uh, I don't know if I'm on board with that villain. We gotta know why. I want yeah. to know why. Don't make me wait two fucking years to find out why. This is what drives me nuts sometimes about these things. When people walk into them and they've already planned out a trilogy, do not give me a the most powerful films. The most powerful trilogies are trilogies where each of the film is a can be a standalone film. And I don't mean that you don't need stuff going on that can carry over and be cliffhangers of course yeah but m- flush them out and i feel like we uh, so many things were just presented to us and not really um uh, uh flushed out and given the background and the history so that we can attach to it and then take that into the next movie it feels like we're just going to be searching for answers through this whole trilogy you know, and that bothered me. Uh, that bothered me, and I and I wanted to know what was the motivation of starting the first order. Why does he hate Hans? Why does he hate his dad? What happened with well, with Ray? We got the. Oh, sorry, Matt. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say that the only to move the story along, though. Yeah. You're asking for exposition quite a bit, and a lot of sure. that is going to be flashbacks. So, how many flashbacks are we going to have? To have to go back and shoot, you know what I mean? Because now you're asking for what happened with Ren, uh-huh. where he was being trained by Luke and ver- apparently turned on right, right. this training academy and killed everybody there. What happened? So we have to go into that story. Then we yeah. also have to go into the story of why he turned away from Han and Leia. Yeah. And then we have to have the Finn backstory of maybe when he was like, this is a ton of backstory. Right. I kind of like that they just made the decision of... We'll address it as we go, but we have to move this particular storyline. Okay, and that's a that's a personal preference thing, right? So I respect that because people do people are okay with it. Like uh, when I was talking about this with Mark Riley at Far Far Away, same thing. He was okay with how it was as long as they pay it off. Like now the 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 onus is on them later on. Just like okay, my guess is the next one is when we get the backstories on this, especially from the Ren Han Solo that family line perspective. We might gloss over Finn until the third one. Yeah. Because then, like, you get the full story of the these stormtroopers and maybe some of the others defect or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But I might be asking too much, though, because if you look at um, the original trilogy, Luke is really the one that's fleshed out. You do get Leia as a princess, but Leia's already a princess from the beginning. He, right? yeah. You don't get a lot of backstory. that They weren't siblings. Yeah, right. Until the second movie. Right. Han Solo is... But I think the way Han Solo was presented in the original trilogy is better than the way Poe Dameron is presented here. Poe is just... He's just a pilot, and he's a fighter, and he's a smart ass, and... He, you know, he has that moment where he, the, you know, the Kylo uses the force on his head and makes him scream, but then he finds a way to escape, and then uh, Finn helps him escape. But there's no, like, there's no moments of conversation with anybody of vulnerability and talking about, like, why he's part of the rebellion or the resistance. There aren't those down moments in, in a battle. It wouldn't have to be expedition, like, huge flashbacks. It's just, like, a downtime in, in a battle or after they've gotten back to the base, and there's a conversation with Leia where she's like, what did you find? What happened? Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah, this, this. Yeah, it just reminds me of when we were blah, blah, blah. Well, that was a time. That, you know, it could have yeah. been something. And I just felt like it wasn't. Um, there wasn't enough there. Um, as opposed to Ray, who is fantastic in the film. Daisy Ridley is so good. Yeah, I, I think you just have to choose your battles. Yeah, She's going to be the star of these three. Mm-hmm. Along with, looks like Finn along for the ride. Yeah, Boyega, John Boyega, yeah. Um, 
And Poe Dameron. And Oscar Isaac looks but good, too. I think Oscar Isaac, the only reason he signs on for this is if, like, they give him an idea of, here's where we're going. Yeah. We have to use you this, like this, in the first one. Right. But we're going to give you a lot more. You're going to grow into this character. Yeah, like Luke. Like, yeah. Mark Hamill, come back. We're going to have this one shot of you near the end. And then the second film is where you're really, because we've moved Solo out of the way, Yeah, you're going to be the central. You're going to be the focus. Yeah. It's going to be you and Daisy. Yeah. Training and stuff. Yeah, yeah exactly. And doing, I mean, basically, they did a hybridized version of four and six for the first one. Yeah. So in the next one, it's going to be, a, it looks like Empire-ish. Yeah. Definitely. Um, it's going to be really good. And that's the other thing. I walked out of, like, when they did the side-by-side of the Death Star, and this thing's so much bigger than Death Star. I was like, I love that they just said, fuck it, let's remake... <laughs> What's been classic about this goddamn series? You do like that? I, just, just because. Uh, once again, it's a safe choice. Yeah, and I will take safe choices because of the damage from pre- yes. the prequels. <laughs> because, like, the I other, love that logic, man. I do. I well, do because it, 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 Lucas was just like so blown away by what he could accomplish with CGI, yeah, yeah, which yeah. I don't blame him because they were pushing the boundaries of what was possible and they did all these cool characters, yeah. but it was for the sake of doing all these cool characters. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. had nothing to do to propel the story or to pay off with uh, act like the actors, the, the characters' storylines. Yeah. The jokes fell flat all the fucking time. Oh, yeah, they did. Whereas in this one, like... I would say quite a few of them hit, at yeah. least for me. Agreed. Some of the others, like the, the Oscar Isaac, like, uh, so do you talk first? Do I talk yeah, first? Yeah, yeah. I, you thought it was out of place. Yeah, yeah, I didn't like it. Okay. I didn't like it. Yeah. Um, but agree, at the same time, some of those, yeah. I would have accepted, like, so why do you guys wear all the masks? <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> right. Just something, but I, I, I don't yeah. know. But my theater liked it. It's yeah. one of those. But there were other jokes where I was like, that's a good joke. Yeah. Come on, that's a good joke. Especially, like, some of the Chewie and Han stuff and the Han in general. Man, he was so good so in that good, movie. Dude. So good. So much pain. Mm-hmm. So much. Like when he when they ask him about Luke, Luke Skywalker, and his turn when he turns around and he's yeah, like, yeah, It's all real. Yeah, I knew him. I knew Luke. I was like, oh, it was so powerful. Well, you know? especially the lighting on his eyes. Yeah. It made it look like it was teary. Yeah. But they were just, you know, shooting a bright light or maybe with CGI, giving it a, a sparkle, but it looked like he was mildly welling up like yeah. recalling the past or the pain of all right, of it right and yeah man harrison ford was yeah. i mean phenomenal in this and like you said that moment on the bridge when he is killed there's the reaching for the face and the how, yeah. and he's almost forgiving him before he even dies which is great great point man but i i love the care that they took with that character yeah they set him up with look he's a guy you mean kylo no, no, no. no you uh, mean Harris, uh, Han Solo. Han Solo. Yeah, 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 yeah. The care with, like, uh, um, when they had the dual factions of people that want their 50,000 credits oh, or yeah, whatever yeah. it is back, and you see that he's still a smuggler. He is. He went back to a life that he understands, right. and now he's smuggling these great little beast characters. Yeah. So great. They set it up. Trust me, you don't want to. Yeah. And when she hits those those fuses, that's the first thing I thought of. When she hit that last one, I was like, oh, is it fuses for all the ship? Because if it is, you know. We just found a way out of the situation for Han. Yeah. But that whole sequence with, and the first time he grabs uh, Chewie's crossbow and shoots, yeah. I think it's, is it right there? Or is it toward the, the end of that scene? I can't remember. That's, yeah. Uh, Can I borrow this? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it just shoots him. It's like, oh, this thing's great. This thing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a, that thing, I think, has gotten more powerful with age because I don't remember it being able to shoot and blow two guys away. Yeah. Like yeah. blow up the area in, you know, around them. Yeah. But I will say this much. Apparently, anybody can pick up a lightsaber. Now, let's get to that because I didn't get a chance to address that in the other, my other review that I did. And I want to talk about that because, to me, that really bothered me. That you, I mean, the whole setup of the original trilogy is that you have to be trained to use this yeah. thing. And if you watch Rebels or if you watch any of the other media or read any other media, you can't just pick up a lightsaber and start wielding it with no training. You, you're going to be lost. I can't pick up a sword with no training and just start wielding it, I no mean, matter how much fighting training I have. We saw her kick the two dudes' asses well, with a staff. Her. It's It's Finn I'm talking about. I don't mind Daisy because well, she has the staff. When right. you're watching that, but when you rewatch it, because I was saying the same thing. It was like, why? But, but Ren is toying with him. He, he, he gets yeah. one hit on him. And the, because he's not taking him seriously, yeah. But the moment he does, like there are points at which is like he's olaying him and let him go past, and he's right. having he's having fun with it. It's a cat and mouse, yeah. Because he realizes he's not in his arena. But I don't know if I like her just jumping in and being yeah. his equal. 
Yeah, with the force and everything. Everything like, across yeah. the board. Yeah, she yeah, can yeah. stop him, him trying to read her mind. She can do this. She can do right. this. And she hasn't been taught or trained to how, like, how to hone any of it. Yeah. Like, if that the separation within the Earth happens sooner within the fight, and she's managed to, like, fend him off. Yeah. And, and do it in a way that was, like, you know, maybe well, they... Go ahead. Maybe an overall explanation, Matt, is that because he is so conflicted, he has his uh, weaknesses now, and that could explain the fact that he toyed with Finn when he could have, because he'd shown earlier in the movie he can freeze people with his force, yeah, power, and like shoot them across rooms or across locations. He could have easily done that to Finn with no problem, no problem, because Finn has no power or force power to come back at him with, and so he could have done well, that. Plus, so, but he's yeah, Finn is afraid. And he's right. feeding off of that fear, right? So knowing that he's got the upper hand, whereas right. Ray is not fearful once she like just calms herself and centers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but, so, so that when he comes back and does the thing with, I think the the I didn't mind the Ridley going back and forth with him that he couldn't break her down because me either because I like the fact that she's coming. My problem with her using the Force is when she all of a sudden knows how to use. How to make the guy... Oh, the Jedi mind trick? Yeah, the Jedi mind trick. Yeah. Luke saw that because... Luke knew he could do that because Ben did it in front of him. And he was like, oh, that's possible. But also from his training, you know what I'm saying? And so, whereas Daisy picked it up and... Or, I mean, uh, the character's name, uh, Ray picked it up. And uh, somebody argued that... uh, Matt argued, or Mark rather, argued that it's because she read his mind, she saw he could do that. And I'm like, that's a stretch. That's asking a lot of the viewer to assume that, you know? Yeah, and and that's also, like, b- creating a large assumption that she was able to read any reach of his mind. Right. Other, she only read that he was afraid that he was never going to be as powerful as Darth Vader or as, yeah. as evil as Darth Vader, right? But it, that could be at the forefront of his mind because he's uh, yeah. dealing with that, so it's easier to read yeah. that as opposed to this buried, oh, yeah, Jedi can do all these things. It's not right. like she's... Went into the Matrix and was like, "Fucking teach me kung fu," you yeah. know. It's that, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. That that thought is at the forefront of his mind because that's all we've seen from him yeah. is the angst that he's carrying. Of for some reason, he's trying to become his grandfather yeah. and hates the generation in between. Yeah, we don't know why yet. Yeah. Um, Did you like it? Did you like that you had a villain that had like this existential crisis that was right on the surface? And if it pays off, yes. Yes. Yeah, see, now this is something too. Like. I initially did not like it. I didn't like that he took his mask off and he has no scars, no problem with his face. So now he does. Well, now he does. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it seems like they're almost essentially creating, they're almost redoing Vader better than they did in the prequels. Like they're redoing the evil and they're going backwards. And it's an f- interesting twist to have him be not want to go to the light. Like the light is the evil thing in his life. Like, the light draws him. And to him, that's a negative thing to go to the light. Whereas we have been told in the original trilogy that it's a negative thing to go to the dark, the darkness. And so it's interesting to have it kind of twist or flipped on its head that it's now the light that is a danger to this guy. You know, and you're right. The pay, if the, it works and the payoff is great, which means he does not have redemption. He goes straight to evil and yeah, he no, stays evil. He stays to evil. To the end. Exactly. To the fight with Ray in the tri- end of the trilogy, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah, there is no redemption for him. Yeah. Because you just killed Han Solo. Man. I mean, just. Fucking, I can't get, it's still such a powerful thing, which is why I'm going to go back and see it again and experience it. And But, and, and you know, but there's a criticism for me attached to that, too, because it's like we don't get to see Luke, Leia, and Han together one more time, you know, to have a, a scene together one That's more true. Time. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, that that bothered me, and... I really wanted to see a scene with them and Chewie and C-3PO and R2-D2, and which were also pretty marginalized in the movie. C-3PO was really almost useless. Yeah, so and, was R2-D2. And R2-D2, right. Until he the, just there, miraculously yeah. comes on out of nowhere. Yeah. Oh, sh- you guys are looking for a map? <laughs> Hold on. <clears throat> you, I got a map that's missing a piece. Yeah. Um, what's up, guys? <laughs> that part was like, oh, that's, that's insanely convenient. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, but but all this being said, great homages to the original trilogy, great moments, very fun back and forth, awesome battles, uh, both on planets and then uh, in the air. Um, there was a lot to there was a lot to enjoy about the movie. There are just some things that I that me overall I felt if we had fleshed them out a little bit more, I would be a disciple of this movie. Like I would be such a um, 
lover of the movie, you know. So, but who knows? Go, I'm going back a couple more times, so I may end up falling in love with it eventually. But, yeah, you know. Still, though, like I love. There was a part that slayed me, and I I only heard like three, four other people laughing. Uh huh. But it fucking slayed me. The Ren when the first time he gets pissed off and goes lightsaber ape shit. Oh yeah. And they keep oh, cutting the back to the guy. <laughs> And he's just no, no. The two stormtroopers was later. That was, oh yeah, but that was a great moment. Yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they just turn around. <laughs> the first time where the guy comes to give him bad news, and it's just oh, him solo. Yeah, and the sparks are flying, and he's like he's grimacing and trying to not avert his gaze because he's got to show respect. But he's oh, it's very much like Fem- Philip uh, Seymour Hoffman and Big Lebowski. Yeah. It's like not to that degree going for comedic effect, but he was like. Eh. <laughs> Uh, plus, he doesn't want to catch the ire of him because this guy could easily kill him 15 yeah. different ways. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> me, a couple other guys. I love it. The dude sitting next to me um, was so excited. He was breathing through his nose. And anytime like, uh, a scene was building, you just hear. <laughs> 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 it was cracking me up. Like At first, I was like, dude, you got to be kidding me. But then I noticed that it was anytime the stakes yeah. were building at all, he was just getting amped up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and releasing, like, I'm glad that I saw it in a packed house. Yeah, like best it, way to see it. It is. There were, I mean, the people in front of me were talking quite a bit. Yeah, but they were whispering where you couldn't hear them, but you could see them moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's one of those of I'm not going to say anything because I can't hear you. Right. You're not really distracting, but I want to be so focused on this. I'm finding reasons to be distracted. Almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but there was something where I was at ArcLight and an usher had to come up and get somebody, and there was like a kerfuffle. But not really, but kind of. Yeah. Like, you could see people looking in that direction, but it was far enough away from me that I couldn't quite hear it. Maybe you had a weapon or something. Because some, I don't some know. of the theaters aren't allowed. They said you weren't allowed to bring lightsabers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or, Arclight or was like that. Chance. They checked yep. every bag, yeah. which I've never seen them do. Yeah. And then they had signs posted, no no makeup, no masks, yeah. no weapons. Oh, interesting, man. Yeah, nothing. Just we're trying to keep this safe. That's where we are now in our society, man. Yep. Some, some fucking yeah, apples. Yeah, you know what? For liability reasons on their part, yeah, because this is a movie that everybody's going to dress up and go to, right? And unfortunately, movie shootings or movie theater shootings have happened twice now, yeah, in what three years, four years, yeah. It's a reality. We had two guys last night at the ten o'clock showing at the Grove who were dressed up in Jedi robes, which I thought was cool, yeah. But they were the only two. I saw one dude, yeah, uh, yeah, but I didn't see what I was anticipating, which is just a horde. Of people dressed <laughs> yeah, I to thought them. so too I thought it was going to be Comic Con Part 2 Or some shit like that But it yeah. didn't quite Flesh out like that um, Let's talk about Ray, man Did you, you Great development on her right I mean great performance By Daisy Ridley It's her first film For God's sakes Like everything else She's done has been TV um, I thought she was great Didn't you Do you think When Kira Knightley Sees this She's going to be pissed <laughs> off She should be That she's not 10 years younger Yeah well Also This girl is basically Kira Knightley Yeah A better version I would sure. say I would recast every Kira Knightley film with her. Yeah, and I would probably. She's got more charm. Of. She does, and she's got she's more interesting, I think, in her performances. And there's more reality and truth in her moments that I really liked. I'm always I'm always aware when I watch an actor what they're doing with the middle of their forehead, what they're doing in scenes. If they're using their forehead to act the scene, you're betraying that you're not a hundred percent feeling what's happening. But if you find, but if you're like, if there's something you can tell, like when there's a flatness to the forehead, but the eyes are doing what they're doing, then you know the person's dialed into the scene, and I, it's, a, it's an acting trick to use your forehead to convey what's happening. And so I thought Daisy did a fantastic job with that throughout the whole film. She was very in the moment, yeah, very real. The terror that she would feel in well, certain moments was real. shit. Her back and forth with Han Solo. Oh yeah, dude. Where you can see that he, she instantly. Yeah. Takes to him in a paternalistic way, mm-hmm. or that that she could see him as a paternalistic right. you know, influence in her life. Right. And when when uh, um, Rilo says it later, like, "Oh, you look at the father for her, yeah, yeah, Kylo." Yeah, yeah. God damn it! I keep doing that. <laughs> okay. It was Arlo earlier, yeah. so now it's Rilo, and it's said it's Kylo. I think it's because it's Ren on the end, and I put an R on instead of. Well, we're waiting it, for Lilo and. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're all coming. They're Stitch. All coming. We'll bring out the whole parade of characters eventually. <laughs> but when he says like, "Oh, yeah. you know, he'll be disappointing," but. Yeah, I didn't. It, that that to me seemed very true to the character. In that, like, okay, that's who she's longing. Her father left her on that planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is what she's been missing. She's been, you know, struggling out there on her own. Right. Um, I don't know if I needed the. He's not coming back with the alien. Oh, Masconada. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's a great. That, but that whole sequence was great. That was great, and that CGI characters. That's the. Oh, that's the yeah. other thing I learned about this. Yeah. They used as much makeup as humanly possible, yep. and just popped in great little CGI here and there. But yep. they took such care within the the peripheral characters of yeah. the world, like the cantina yeah. homage scene. Cantina was great. They did the same thing. We're just like cut three shot or three person shot here cut to two person shot in like there's like here's some characters here's some characters here's some characters back to the story you want to mm-hmm. see what the world is yeah. just like we were showed before yeah. and like little things as they were coming into that town right before the cantina scene the i guess it would be a, the equivalent of a metal pecker instead of a woodpecker it oh was just yeah banging but for lucas it would have been this crazy cgi character that just didn't quite and that looked very believable to me and like okay with an uncomfortable ethnic accent. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, right. I chop a this down. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Like all the little, that. all the little things. Yeah, like that. Like, uh, um, so when they walk into that scene, the one guy, the one droid, uh, uh, calls the resistance and says, "Yeah." And then the girl walks off and says, "You know, hey, first order. Yeah, they're here too." But the guy she's with. Is like this big. It's a CGI, but it looked. It's like, eh, yeah, I've seen that guy at the club. I've right. seen like, okay, you just made. It's fun though. It's you yeah. know, they, they did such. I mean, that's that's one of the other things of they did such a great job with the world mm-hmm. of Agreed. creating a Star Wars that seemed believable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, some of the thing. One of the things that bothered me is that you could see some of the stuff coming in the film because you'd seen it in the trailers. I think they gave away a little too much in the trailers in terms of what, like the resistance flying in. Yeah, you knew that was coming. Mm-hmm. So, and I knew Poe was alive, and I right. knew he was going to be. And it, you knew, and you knew that it, when they had that shot, when they were hiding out in the grill of the Millennium Falcon, that it's Han and Chewie coming through because that's the way. That's the look of the shot. In the trailer, when they were like Chewie, were home when Hans Chewie were home. Oh yeah. So you you saw certain things coming, which I thought they gave like just a little too much. Like the whole like the Millennium Falcon coming through the trees and the snow planet that was pretty cool. But it, we'd already seen it. That's the other thing. Yeah. How thick is the hull on the Millennium Falcon? It's pretty survivable, apparently. And the glass on the front <laughs> of that can take anything. Yeah, apparently. just fucking anything. That, that, I mean, that's one of those of, uh, I'm not going to fault you for, you're having fun. It's basically you brought back another character and you're letting yeah. that character shine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got no problem with that. Yeah. But this thing, I mean, flying like the low on the dunes and whatnot, but yeah. they managed to miss everything. She she hits some, like when they're initially taking off, yeah. they scrape against some stuff and whatnot as she gets her legs, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. I was like, okay. But then through the trees and they, they slide on the snow yeah. and hit the final rock and you're like no damage this thing can fly again no problem the one monster that they're smuggling latches onto the glass yeah, piece yeah. and they take off and it evaporates which is cool as shit yeah but we saw that thing just go roadhouse on the entire salvage ship that they're on you're telling me it can't take out this glass it's got a mouthful of huge sarlacc like teeth and it can't take out this glass it's just trying to eat the glass it's yeah trying to break the glass <laughs> But at the same time, it's like, I don't care. The yeah, fact yeah, that they go to light speed and it evaporates like in front of them is like, yeah. hey, great. Why yeah. not? It, and it was a fun, it was a fun, uh, a very fun film. Uh, you can't deny that. It was a very fun film. And in a way, it was, uh, it was so fun that you, you could overlook other things. And I think that's, yeah. that's a positive of the film. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like the whole, like Leia. What's Leia? What's the point of Leia? Like Leia doesn't do anything, and it's it's kind of bothersome that her son has run off and is a a training to be a you know a Darth or a Sith Lord, and she doesn't go after him. The Leia from the original trilogy steals a starship, gets going, goes. Yeah, maybe she confronts did. it. And, I don't. Right, yeah, we, we don't, don't know. know. Maybe she did. She sent Solo and said, "Bring him home." My guess is when Luke is teaching uh, Ray, he'll talk about what happened. Yes, of course. And Absolutely. then we'll also then get the no. Leia tried to do this, and we'll yeah. get to all the backstory on that. So we'll figure out that's we're gonna they're, they're gonna give us the lay of the land there because yeah. they've got so much explanation there. I guess so. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But my question, like on the Finn backstock. Uh, oh yeah. Backstory, unless. Unless they thought, like, uh, there is a mass exodus of these kids that have been kidnapped, apparently, right, which right. is highly likable or uh, possible. Right. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm just, I'm extending them the good grace because yeah. they didn't do a terrible job. They did, no. in my eyes, a, a great job, yeah. all things considered, just because, guys, I mean, please, please. That's all I'm asking. Please. <laughs> just don't be terrible. That's all I wanted. And they achieved that. So they really did. Go yeah. see it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I but if you're listening well. to this, hopefully you've already seen it. And let, we just spoiled the living shit out yeah, of it. Yeah, we really did. Go see it again. If you, yeah, I will. Yeah. yeah. As I was watching it last night, because I'm going to see my brother next week oh, over cool. at Christmas. Yeah. Uh, I know he saw it last night. I already texted him. I was like, hey, you know, if I don't get a chance to see it this week, we should yeah. probably figure out a time to go see it. Yeah. Again, because I definitely want to. I'd like to take my nephew. I don't think my my sister's... Oh, well. I that guess happens. That is, yeah. Whoever it is, and they'll come out and usually, yeah, yeah, turn it off pretty quickly because that, that car does that <laughs> all, the, all time. the time. It's so much like... I I don't know. It's like four times a week, five times a week, but they're always lickety split. I think it's just a yeah. hair trigger alarm that it's goes off it goes nonstop. Off. <laughs> uh, do you, do you uh, accept, like, my idea... Well, not my idea, but, like, what seems to be the general consensus is that... Uh, Ray is Luke's daughter. I'd assume so. Yeah, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So I just wanted to see, because it seemed like that was pretty clear what they were saying. You know. Now, do you think he she was, like, immaculately conceived? No, no, no. just full formed out no, of his no, huevos? No, no, because, because in the extended universe, he has a wife. It's not canon yet, but he has a wife and he has a child. So it may be that they bring her into the second film, or... That she is spoken about and talked about, as you said, probably probably in flashback, in some version of a flashback, because she has that flashback where she's being held. What's that? And she wants to go on the like she sees the ship leaving and she don't leave me, don't leave me. You know, it's either that or honestly, I don't know why the first order, yeah, doesn't just have massive stations on every desert world because apparently anybody with the force comes yeah. like badass skills in the force, yeah. comes from a desert planet. So why don't we oh, just yeah. station <laughs> on desert fucking planets and wait for the next one to crop up? Right, right. Uh, and they can't keep. They can't seem to catch those Skywalkers. Yeah, they that clan it's is so fucking. It's an elusive. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not... I guess it would make sense, but then it's just like, a, okay, so Luke was doomed to repeat the the sins of his father yeah. by abandoning his child. I guess so. That seems weird. Like it seems weird that he would just leave. Yeah, you know what it, I'm saying? it seems more like that he would have learned the mistake of me yeah. not having a father yeah. did these things to me, so I need to be around to teach her. Yeah. Unless he was so ruined by Ren yeah. going to the dark side that he's just like, I, I shouldn't teach yeah. you know, kids that have the force. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's interesting. But yeah, at the same time I'm just as we said, I'm I'm going to extend to them. Yeah. A lot of leeway. So figure it out, fellas. You got quite you know, you've got a bunch of questions asked, but at the same yeah. time, that's a good thing. It's that we have those types of questions yeah. as opposed to that fucking character was terrible. Yeah. Why in the world did they do this? And that action series or sequence was so boring. Yeah. So boring. It was just a lot of bluster and for no point. Whereas in this, all the action yep. worked Absolutely. And really well. Yeah. I would have liked to have seen a funeral for Solo. Some kind of eulogy or whatever, you know what I'm saying, to talk about. I figured that would have come between uh, Ray and Leia. Yeah. Because so, she or, witnessed it along with Finn. Or Leia and Chewie. Yeah, Leia and Chewie. That would have been sure. a, that, that would have solved it for me perfectly to have Leia and Chewie hug, have a moment of like real grieving with each other and just a quick like you know, I you know, just something, just something where she says I you know, he's gone or I can't believe, or like something or where she's like I'm so sorry, Chewie. Like, you know, something where there's a connection. Because their scenes together were still magic. Still magic. Yeah. Uh, Carrie Fisher and Harrison Ford. So it would have been nice to see some more of that. This could be the... I don't know. I'd have to think about it. But uh, the thought just occurred to me. But yeah. this could be the best usage of uh, Chewbacca in... Oh, yeah. In, especially within context of conversation. Yeah. I wonder if that's an I am Groot. Uh, try, like, you know... Uh, byproduct yeah. of here's a character that we don't understand yet to contextualize within the context of like what or not contextualize within the context that's just circular definition <laughs> wheels within wheels man yeah contextualize <laughs> within the scene of like the way people react and the next question or the reaction that they have to whatever he says yeah because he drops some great comedic punchlines really does without gosh. having to do anything yeah. just like you know 
Chewie would do that every once and again. Yeah. But it'd be like once a movie, it was just like, okay, they figured out the rhythm of this character yeah. a lot better than at least over the course of an entire film as opposed to he's just kind of Chewie. Yeah. And all the others. I love that doctor scene. That was everything. Yeah. That was so funny. She's like, oh, so you must be some kind of, uh, you must, must be so brave. Eh, you know, we're, 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 it was great. Yeah. Great real thing. Same, same thing BBA. BBA, fantastic. Yeah. My God, what an amazingly alive, fun, and, and enjoyable droid character to bring to Star something. And, and guess what? That is something that we as adults liked and yeah. kids are going to love. Oh, yeah. Kids are going to love. love. It yeah. is basically like a little kid that has a ton of information and can help. Like, yeah. I can do this too, guys. Yeah. But, you know, a, a lot of great emotion or when he tells, uh, when Finn tells him that Poe is dead and he drops yeah. his head and yeah. just slowly rolls off. It's like, they, why would a droid have an emotional attachment? <laughs> but we see that within this world. Exactly. But it was just, it was so good. Yeah. Um, I love his, like, Shocking Finn to tell him. What about the thumbs up? Yeah, the thumbs up. The thumbs great. up was fantastic. <laughs> that is a joke that worked a hundred percent in yeah. my theater. Excellent. Just the uh, <laughs> boy gives it to him and he just fucking shoots it right back. And he wasn't smiling, but you know, yeah. I think we all projected a huge like grin on his yeah. face. Like fuck yeah, let's do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was a great. And also the Harrison Ford of. Finn is trying to like act big. I'm big oh, time. Yeah, yeah. Big and he's deal. Like, a big deal. Yeah, you got a bigger problem. They always the girls Women always find always out. Always know the truth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just <laughs> love that. First off, that is a cliche within movies, but it's within life. You can only but lie for so true. long. You yeah. can only lie for so long. It Woman, is woman's intuition, man. Oh, it's just like, uh, dude, you're on a sinking ship and you have a Dixie cup. If yeah, you're doing that. <laughs> you can bail for so long. You know what I mean? You'll stay afloat for a while. <laughs> You'll lie to yourself that salvation is coming, but ultimately you're going to sink and die. Oh, God. I remember I got caught in a lie. <laughs> it's with, the worst. With my ex one time. It's the worst. She was like, she. I told her I was someplace else. You did the, I'm staying at his house <laughs> and went to another guy's house? <laughs> you're like 16. Mom, I'm staying no, at Chris's. No. In reality, I'm going to this Brad's. Is last year with my ex. That's I'm what I'm saying. You're like yeah, a 16-year-old. Yeah, I did 16. Yeah, I was like well, I said I said something like I was going to I was going to be some where I'm I'm uh, some I'm on my way some but I wasn't on my way. I was at a friend's house and I told her I was in the car on the way. She was You're on the way? It doesn't sound like you're in a car. Oh no, it's the new blue the new bluetooth the way they've got it set up. I it's really clear this jawbone thing I have. It's really clear. It's supposed to cut out all noise and noise canceling. I'm telling you, 2 months. 2 months. She would occasionally like talk about it and bring it up and try to catch me and then finally, <laughs> finally I was like, okay, you know that thing. Yeah, I what I was was that I wanted to stay a little bit longer. I was still getting high with, and watching stuff, and I I know I was supposed to be where I was supposed to be, but I didn't. It's just I, uh, you know, I just wanted to do that, and it, I the traffic did not take longer. I, you're right, I wasn't in the car, and she's like, I knew it. I just wanted to hear you say it. I just thank you for saying that, and I was like, okay, fine. But yeah, they always know. Yeah, they and they don't let it go until you tell them the truth. That's the worst. My my wife had. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not criticizing, right? I'm yeah. just saying, yeah. My wife and I had a fight six months. We we don't really fight. We'll get mad at each other and just stop talking to each other for a little while. That's good. And then we come back and we'll just be like, listen, this is why I did this yeah. and whatever, and explain and just be like, you know, if like if anything, once once I snapped at her and we were driving and I was telling her directions, she, she couldn't get it. Yeah. And then I turned around and I pulled up next to her and was like, I have no idea why I did that. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. And she was like, Thank you, because that was way over the line. It was like, I know. I don't know where that came from. You have to because we're yeah. fucking we're all crazy. We're yeah. all crazy, we're and every once and again, away. just that er- erratic. So when I wake up in the morning, like I, I know I don't. I like a light meal. Yeah. When I wake up, because mm-hmm. a lot of times, like I'll I'll have some, a snack before I go to bed, so I don't wake up really hungry. And I woke up one time, and she made me like eggs Benedict and something else. Yeah. And I'm not an eggs Benedict fan. And on top of that, so I just saw it and I was like, no thanks. And it pissed her off. For I brought it up a year later. And she was like, you don't know how long I was fucking mad at you. <laughs> and I was like, I never asked for Eggs Benedict. You just made me Eggs Benedict. I don't want that. And she was like, well, I know that now. But at the time, I was doing something nice. <laughs> and you just fucking straight shot. And it was just yeah. like, a, okay, <laughs> bring it up sooner then. We should, uh, you shouldn't be having an internal fight about Eggs Benedict in your head that is uh, making you mad at me. Ugh. 
Relationships, man. Dude. Relationships. I had the constant navigation, dude. I've heard the the <laughs> cliche, the classic stupid girl had a dream where a guy cheated on her. Like, oh, like, yeah. Wakes up. That is off. true. I woke up because my wife cheated on me in a dream, oh. and I was I didn't say anything to her, but when, oh, yeah. I literally when I woke up, I looked at her and I lo- looked at her with <laughs> eyes of, "You fucking bitch." <laughs> I did. I carried the emotional <laughs> resentment from something my mind created into the real world and projected on her. I was oh, like, yeah. oh, you fucking, I can't believe you do that to yeah. me. And then I told her about it laughing later. And I was like, you have no idea what happened to me. It's like, I've heard that story of like, how crazy are girls? Yeah. And I woke up, I was like, oh my God. Yeah. I'm just as crazy. I had, I had that. Yeah. She did that one time. Yeah. I've never had it happen she to me. She was super pissed for the whole weekend. And I was like, ah. I it was a dream. Yeah, it was a dream. Yeah, I let it go instantly. It was like, yeah. oh, oh, this is what well, my mind made it up. And yeah, no, they fifty don't... other things happened in that dream. Yeah, <laughs> but well, that one really. That's yeah, up. that's what I'm latching onto. But it's like it's not real. Uh, okay. Anyway, so um, yeah. after that, um, uh, so that's our recap review. Right? Is there anything more you want to say about it? No. Yeah, go see it. Uh, Definitely um, right. Yeah, I think I'm going to wait until, like, Wednesday. Okay. Hopefully it's died down by then and people yeah. are waiting for the holiday weekend to go see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, I might try and see it in IMAX, too. Yeah, it'd be fun to see it in IMAX. But, yeah, now I can go during the day. I want to see it at night because right. it's a nighttime event and it makes it feel more, you know, in tune with what it is to me. Na- the next one I don't care, and I'm hoping during the day nobody's going to be in it either. Yeah. Although there's still going to be, whatever, third capacity guaranteed. Right. If... You know, this weekend is any indication. Oh, do you yeah. think it'll break uh, Lost World or Jurassic World? Rather, I I do think it'll do it. It's on forty one hundred screens. They keep adding shows, which is insane to me that they keep adding shows. That means that the demand is all time high. Yeah, and uh, they're apparently they shattered records for Thursday night openings, fifty shattered. to fifty five million. Yeah, it was like insane for a Thursday night. So I can only imagine what Friday and Saturday and Sunday are going to be like because it's getting great reviews and great yeah. buzz. You know, yeah, and, and it, it could easily do a hundred million each day. Yeah, and then Sunday still counts as well, right? So I, yeah, I think the ballpark of three hundred million is, yeah, within realm, certainly possible. Yeah, it. I believe it'll be the fastest film to one billion worldwide ever. I think it'll get there quicker than any. What's film. the all-time record? Titanic at what? Uh, you mean total? Box yeah, total office? overall. I don't know that because I, I know it it's. Let me I, look it up real I, quick. I want to say it's like two billion or something, or maybe one and a half billion. Right, right. It could be. I think it could easily get that. Yeah, cause just because of the international appeal and it is such an homage to the classics that most people enjoy. Yeah, there's the younger generation that grew up with the for you know the second trilogy was their trilogy. Yeah, and I get it if you have that you know emotional attachment to it because had I had those when I was your age. Those would be mine. Oh, absolutely. As well. Oh, so absolutely. And to a kid, it's a spectacle, and it's crazy to see all these characters do all these interesting things. Right. It's just, as an adult, it fails on the story and the acting so thoroughly that I just, I can't. But this one is, although I do think you need to be a fan of Star Wars to truly appreciate it, because there's so yeah, much. There really is. It is just like, a, you know, inside baseball shit. Yeah. I mean, the burnt out at at was great. Yeah. That she the her wearing the but X-Wing the, pilot helmet. The Jedi mind trick. Yeah, the Jedi There is mind no trick. explanation of that and all of a yeah. sudden she has that ability and if you don't know, yeah. just like okay. Or the significance of Leia. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. anytime any of these older actors walk on the screen, the theater or, erupted. Or Darth Vader. The mention of Darth yeah. Vader. You wouldn't know Darth just Vader. Just seeing the mask, seen, although yeah. we saw that in the trailer. Right, but you don't know who Darth Vader is if you haven't yeah. seen the movies, right? Uh it's Avatar with two point seven billion. Oh, okay. Titanic, two point one billion. Jurassic World, one point six, almost one point seven billion, and then Avengers, one point five. Furious Seven, which breaks my heart, one point five. I'm assuming this will be one of the fifteen movies China allows in. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Well, yeah. So you got to think. China okay. allowed it in there. Yeah, they they only allow like fifteen. Yeah. yeah. Per year that aren't Chinese made. Yep. So it's tough. Like that's why we get so many now. You know. Uh, Asian storylines within huge blockbuster yep. movies of, hey, you know what? It can help get us into, like, The Martian. Yep. The reason we have the Chinese space agency come in. Yep. Or in Iron Man that the doctor is uh, Chinese. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And apparently in, uh, or not Iron Man, but Avengers. Avengers, yeah. In the Chinese cut, there's, like, a, 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 a big scene between her and another Asian actor, a huge, like, Asian actor in wow. China. Of 
course. Yeah, so they had that in there. <laughs> and from the account that I read, the Chinese audiences didn't like it because it just felt so jarring to throw this scene in the middle. But yeah. I don't know if that's true. I'm reading that. Right. Who knows how many hand down the line. Right. So I have no fucking idea. Well, uh, I don't know many average Chinese citizens other than <laughs> Stefan Marbury now. Ew. That's my only one. Who can speak, apparently can speak uh, uh, Mandarin quite well now. Really? From having been there, yeah. Man, what an interesting life, that dude. Listen. He came out in a quote the other day and said he thinks Kobe should finish his career in China. I think Kobe will. No, you think he'll go to China? Yeah. Wow. Kobe's already the biggest athlete in China, <sighs> and they already love him there and idolize him. He can go there and make... Because because Marbury got that green status, yeah. he can now you know open businesses within China. Yeah, yeah. And, and it creates so many more financial opportunities for him. Yeah. So maybe if Kobe goes there, he can team up with Marbury. Marbury can release all his shit and open up businesses for Kobe. Because I don't, I don't see Kobe rescinding his American citizenship. No, 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 no. So that could be a conduit Possible. too. It's just money. Right. For Kobe. Yeah, you're right. It's I think it's going to be now. stuff in Hollywood and stuff in China, and that's what yeah. Kobe's going to be doing for the next five years. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's my guess. <laughs> okay, so there you go. That's our recap and review of The Force Awakens, ending it with Kobe in China. <laughs> Here's a question, too, since we never really talk basketball sure. on. Who uh, who shoots this trade down? Melo to Miami for Dragic and Winslow. Dragic does not play well with Wade. They have not figured like when they play together, yeah. both their purse, especially Drogic, just dip. But you, you're gonna t- you're gonna take away two point guards off your, your top two point guards off your team, and give that to the Knicks in exchange for Carmelo. Who's gonna run well, your points? Winslow's a three, Justice Winslow. Yeah, aren't they trading him to be a point guard? Mm. No, he's gonna be. Sh- no. oh, he's a, he's a three. He's gonna okay. be their Kawhi Leonard. Okay. But, well, but then who runs your points? He has Chalmers more value. Who's your uh, that's fine. You can go get somebody serviceable. I mean, Wade is a ball dominant, too. Right. So he's going to want the ball in his hands anyway. How's that going to work with Carmelo? Uh, but I think Carmelo with Wade and Bosch, because they've done so much FIBA stuff together, yeah. they can figure something out where, hey, Carmelo, you know that you're the greatest three-point international shooter we've ever had? Yeah. Uh, why don't we just figure out a way for you to do that here in the NBA and yeah. reduce your... Because him and Porzingis play so well together, their averages go up because... Yeah. Carmelo doesn't have to do everything now. Right. So I think if you put him in a system where he's, he doesn't have to, he can share the burden, yeah. he'll excel even further. Yeah. No, you make great points. I, yeah, you make great points. I just would hesitate. I think the, the Knicks are rebuilding, Yeah. and you're getting Dragic on a favorable contract when the cap goes up, Yeah. and you're getting another young asset, and you're not going to make the – you might make the playoffs this year, but yeah. you don't have your pick next year, so you might as well just develop as many young guys as you can. And get out from underneath Kobe's, I mean, uh, but Carmelo's money, and be a, a you know a, a wheeler dealer in fucking free agency. Yeah, listen, you make sense. It's logical sense what you're saying. I think there are other factors involved here that'll stop that trade from happening. Well, Carmelo's got a no trade clause. That, yeah, and also Carmelo's roots that he's developing in New York. True. And Lala ain't gonna let him leave New York. That girl I, loves. If New it's York. a chance at a championship, because all you got to do is beat the Cavs and you make yeah. you make the finals. That's yeah. it. That's true. I'm a Bulls fan. We don't have a shot in the best of seven <laughs> against the Cavs. We don't. It sucks, yeah. but we don't. It's LeBron again. It is. It's going to be LeBron again unless you can figure out some sort of other super team to take him down. Yeah. But and Kyrie comes back next week, I think. I mean, He was yeah. supposed to come back last do night. Do you buy Toronto? Do you buy? No. I don't buy anybody but Cleveland. Exactly. Nobody Atlanta. Nope. Charlotte. Nope. Charlotte's on a run. Everybody's like, oh, Charlotte. No. Nope. No. I'm not buying it. No. Justin Lin is getting significant time on your team. You are not going to You mean to Jeremy Lin? Jeremy Lin, I'm sorry. Jeff. He dropped 35 two nights ago. <laughs> yeah, two nights ago. Or maybe last night. 35 one of the two. points, yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway. I just, there's so many other question marks in the East. It's just like, no, all you got to do is beat the Cavs and you right. got it. Yeah. If anybody does that, then great. Then you're the person that's going to be in the finals and then you're yeah. going to lose to Golden State or San Antonio. I just think deal. it's destiny for Cleveland to go back and beat Golden State. With oh, a dude, full, you're... healthy team. Oh, wow. I do. As much as I don't want to see LeBron again. That would be a great series. That's going to be the series. It has to be the series because look, you have to prove to me you can beat Cleveland full full hell. I can't give you credit for that. You won the championship. God love you, but you did not beat Cleveland. Dude, full twenty five and one, twenty five and one, and you're not buying them I, still. I, full strength, twenty five and one. Come on, I just got to see him play in the playoffs. Go to the championship, beat a full healthy Cleveland team. Then I I'm okay. I think it'll be four two all over again. No Golden way. State. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then Cleveland seven. Well, their defense will drop when they have. Kyrie back, so now yeah, it's but their f- offense will increase. 
will increase enough to offset the loss of defense? Yes. That's the question. Yeah, I think it will. Uh, we'll find out. And we'll see how, you know, Draymond is a good defender, but I don't want to get too deep because it's about Force Awakens. Yeah. This will be a whole separate podcast. I know. Okay. We just never talk basketball, and everyone's getting people like, dude, guys, come on. <laughs> I would love a good basketball podcast. I keep telling we should do one on YouTube. Uh, we don't have to worry about putting it on iTunes. Let's, let's, let's All right. get it. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll talk to you next week. Follow Matt at Matt Nost. Follow me at The Roca Says. Bye-bye.